When life gives you lemons, fry up some cod and toss in some chips. Gordon Ramsay, the celebrity chef who exudes cool, calm, and collectedness, most likely said this at some point in his life. Chill as a dill is not one to overreact. Ramsay is well known for his slow temper, frequently choosing the path of least resistance when confronted. So why would a negative review or two bother him? Surely, the monk-like chef and restaurateur would simply harness his chi, open his chakra, and send the critic nothing but light, love, and good vibes. No, not exactly. Though Ramsay is described as more softly spoken in person than the pantomime villain we see giving poor US MasterChef contestants the hairdryer treatment on television in Britain's GQ, there is no doubt that Ramsay still has a fire in his eyes and his belly keeping him in the game. People always think it's about the money, Ramsay tells the interviewer, but it's not. It's the passion. I need the pressure. I need that hit. How does Gordon Ramsay react to bad reviews? Keep watching the video till the end to find out. Have you ever had a bad experience at one of his restaurants? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Bad reviews are sleeping with the fishes. But woe betide you if that hit is too strong. Ramsay welcomes criticism, but admits that a particularly harsh review of his London restaurant Petrus in 2010 was a humdinger. Ramsay admits in the colorful language that has become a trademark of his creed that the restaurant review stung a little. When Giles and Adrian did a number on me, they effed me sideways, he told GQ, referring to British journalist Giles Corin and A.E. Gill, the Times' former food critic who died in 2016. Ramsay went on to explain that at least some of the vitriol in the review could be attributed to Ramsay's own actions, as the chef has made headlines in several locations for ejecting critics from his restaurants. According to The Independent, Ramsay was continuing an honorable tradition when he threw Gill and his party out of Ramsay's new Chelsea restaurant in 2011. Today's Zen Gordon Ramsay, on the other hand, is far more understanding, telling GQ that he makes it a point not to take critics so seriously. You have to take it in on the chin, he says before explaining that when negative reviews about his restaurants are written these days, they are sent to the chipper. We sent every article like that to Vegas to make paper for my new fish and chip shop, so Ramsey can have his feelings and eat them as well. Recently, a customer had a bad experience at one of Gordon's restaurants in London, Savoy Grill. The customer wrote, Expect food poisoning and no apology from Gordon Ramsey. Avoid. He added further, Booked a private dining room at Savoy Grill to entertain my top 10 customers. Seven of the party who attended spent the next 48 hours with severe stomach cramps and vomiting. Our complaints were then fobbed off by their health and safety manager. No apology and no regrets from them, it seems. Avoid this place at all costs. We can only hope that Gordon takes such complaints seriously and doesn't choose to ignore them. Gordon Ramsay may have more Michelin stars than other chefs. He could earn as much as Beyonce and become London's restaurateur king. But let's be clear about one thing. Ramsay is a bully. More people have cursed, belittled, and mocked Ramsay staff and other restaurant owners than have ever tried his food. This nastiness has contributed to Ramsay's shows and persona's popularity in the pop culture spectrum. Ramsay discussed his reputation for outbursts in a 2010 interview with The Guardian. I was a crazy effing psycho. If anyone even bruised a shive, I came down on them like a ton of bricks. Years later, Ramsay hasn't exactly softened, and other than MasterChef Jr., he still can toss around a verbal whipping like nobody else on reality TV. Ramsay's ability to deliver insults that are both hilarious and cringeworthy has even spawned viral parodies. Ramsay forced Big Brother host Julian Chan to call herself an idiot sandwich, and then John Legend crooned some Ramsay-esque insults over piano music. The genius insults hurled by Ramsay, on the other hand, are difficult to match. The well-known pumpkin incident. Whoever approaches Ramsay's kitchen to complain about a dish will be punished. The Hell's Kitchen star doesn't tolerate snark from his staff, and he doesn't make an exception for the occasional snobbish customer. The chef takes a strong dislike to liars, which he told Entertainment Weekly he will not tolerate. When somebody lies to you, it's worse than working with somebody who can't cook, Ramsay said. Because when you trust someone with your reputation and they cross that line, they want the food out of their sight and they tell you they finished it. And you know, they're lying. That's the worst. One restaurant patron complained to the maitre d' and Ramsay about the lack of pumpkin in his risotto despite nearly finishing the plate. I just want more pumpkin. That's all I want, proclaimed the customer before Ramsay let loose. Ramsay telling the customer that he'll get him more pumpkin and shove it where the sun doesn't shine was biting enough but offering to serve it whole or diced was the cherry on top. The customer's stunned reaction upon realizing he had poked the bull and gotten the horns was priceless. Flip-flops or meat? We're probably not alone in thinking that a piece of meat that looks like an old flip-flop isn't going to be a tasty dish. 
It's about as easy as breaking into Fort Knox to sneak a poorly cooked piece of meat past Gordon Ramsay. It's only a matter of time before Ramsay calls out the chef in question and proceeds to rip them apart. In this case, what appears to be a piece of pork belly has been ruined, with Ramsay comparing it to Gandhi's flip-flop in addition to being overcooked. Ouch! That is not the kind of comparison a chef wants associated with their abilities. Chef Jillian seemed to enjoy the insult and is impressed by Ramsay's inventiveness in criticizing the dish. I don't know where he comes up with his stuff. Gandhi didn't even wear flip-flops, exclaimed Jillian. He lived in the jungle. I don't think the dude has shoes. Uh, Jillian, you might be confusing Gandhi with Tarzan because Gandhi did live in the jungle and he definitely wore sandals. Regardless, nobody wants to eat a flip-flop. No staring allowed. It's one thing to have Gordon Ramsay criticize your cooking abilities, but having him rip into you for simply looking his way is quite another. Ramsay chastised one Hell's Kitchen contestant for staring at him in the kitchen. Not only was Chef Mary staring at Ramsay, but she seemed to do so without blinking. How creepy is that? Ramsay warned her about the social faux pas, but Mary couldn't shake it and the other chefs noticed. Mary's staring clearly gave Ramsay the creeps as he remarked that she looks at him like something out of the effing shining. We'll take a wild guess and say Ramsay was referring to Jack Nicholson's psychotic character Jack Torrance. Maybe Ramsay was comparing Mary to those creepy dead twins in the corridor. In any case, no chef wants Gordon Ramsay to compare them to one of the creepiest horror movies of all time as their Hell's Kitchen claim to fame. The Classic Bait and Switch one of Ramsay's favorite insulting techniques is to bait the cook in question by pretending to give them a compliment. Then he flips the script and slams them with a stinging insult. Almost every time it works, and the chef says something to the effect of, Thank you, chef. Of course, chef. The poor chums never seem to see the insult coming. That's exactly what Ramsay does in this Hell's Kitchen clip, telling Ben that his ambition surprises him. Ben, being a fool, falls into Ramsay's trap and begins rambling. Thank you, chef. I was hoping you'd see that. I mean... I give it all I've got, give you 110. Ramsay then tells Ben that the only thing surprising about him is how shiz you are. It's a simply savage move that has the other chefs laughing their heads off. Before moving on to the next chef critique, Ramsay expresses his displeasure with Ben by telling him that he should have kept his day job. Make no mistake, Gordon Ramsay will kick you when you're down and he will enjoy doing so. Like a camel what? There is no amount of spin that can make a food's resemblance to poop sound appealing. But that's exactly the criticism Jimmy, or Big Boy as Ramsay refers to him, receives in one round of Hell's Kitchen. To be fair, not a single contestant appears to be sweating bullets when called up to present their plate to Ramsay. Perhaps it's because he starts the critique by lifting the lid and asking, Whose is this? in a tone that roughly translates to, Who does this hot garbage belong to? When Jimmy presents his seared and stuffed chicken breast, Ramsay immediately sums it up by comparing it to a dehydrated camel's turd. Telling him it looks like a camel's turd is cruel enough, but it doesn't even look like a fresh camel's turd. No way, this chicken breast is as dry as a piece of dung that has been sitting out in the desert sun for days. Ramsay ends the humiliating critique by flicking the carrot greens off the plate at a visibly defeated Jimmy and then spitting out the food. Can we all take a moment to remember Jimmy? Ramsay had just murdered him. And that's all for today's video. Thanks for watching. Do let us know your thoughts in this video in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, then do like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more such exciting content. See you in the next one.